Hey y'all, Lost Sandman R35 coming at you from Two Guys Reviews, and I am in space. Space! Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are in space, and we are going to do a review now of Dead Space 3. Uh, let's go start with the positives. Well, uh, if you guys are not familiar with the Dead Space franchise, and I know some of you still aren't, and you should be, uh, this is a collage of science fiction horror made into a comprehensive game. So basically, take the best bits of every scary movie that you've seen that takes place in space, put them into a collage together with original fresh storyline, and then you have that space. Uh, the camera view is a third-person perspective and always has been. In the very first Dead Space, however, Isaac Clarke does not talk. That's the main character. Uh, the In Dead Space 2, he did start uh, with talking him in Dead Space 3 as well. Uh, I had uh, really no expectations for this game other than the fact that I wasn't too sure if this was going to hold up with the second one because the second one turned out to be a beast of a game. That thing was awesome. Absolutely love that game, and uh, wasn't too sure if the third one was going to, to be able to, to keep on the same level, if not improve upon that formula, and gladly I could say that yes, they have most certainly kept in line with the Dead Space, uh, and kept the formula alive, and made one hell of a third game. Uh, the only thing, uh, and I'll get to the negatives, but there's not many. I'll tell you that much right now. Uh, the, the positives, the graphics are just absolutely ridiculous, and the sound effects are absolutely ridiculous, and the gameplay is uh, pretty solid. Uh, it's like a pretty solid shooter. It's always been pretty solid. It's never been, you know, 100% fluid, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's its own kind of animal. It's kind of a mix between... Oh, I don't know. Gears of War and Resident Evil 4 Plus, uh, as far as the gameplay. Um, one of the things that they did let you do in this one is craft your own weapons from different parts that are lying around, which is fantastic. Uh, I'll post a video later on and I'll, I'll explain right. to you the Delegation whole loadout. Uh, the cutscenes and the integration of the gameplay into the cutscenes, which you're about to see, is this is one of my favorite scenes. Uh, is absolutely fluid, and uh, you can never tell when I'm actually playing or not just by watching. But uh, you'll see, you know, what looks like, you know, he's running back towards the back of the ship where there's a fire and everything later on, and that's all me controlling him. I'm actually walking him back there, and it's his animation of him stumbling around in the camera angle and everything that makes it work out so well. Uh, also, flying the ship. I am actually flying the ship and shooting at things at the same time. So, <clears throat> pardon me. That is good. The music has even gotten better and better and better from the first one. Uh, creepy and uh, with hints to... And yes, I know I just did the Aliens Colonial Marines review, but uh, there is uh, hints and tributes to a lot of stuff from Aliens, uh, especially once you're on the planet uh, and you're, you know, looking at buildings, you could hear, you know, some familiar audio cues that they, you know, would purposely put in there as a tribute to those films. Also talking about the uh, sound and the sound effects, I am lucky enough to own a pair of Astro A50 headphones, uh, which are one of the best headphone sets out there. There's a couple out there that are really good. I know some of the Turtle Beaches and some of the Tritons are very good, but... Uh, this game with the Astro A50s, I, I can't even play it without the Astro A50s anymore because the subtle sounds that you hear, ice cracking when you're on the planet and snow drifts and blowing wind on buildings and metal groans and creaks and all those miscellaneous little sound effects that you hear that really complete and flush out the environments to make them feel like they're real places and excuse me because i as i've said before i play everything on invert including flying things and since i'm flying things i had to put the flight invert on on this one and that has to do with the fact that i play a lot of flight simulator games so down is up and up is down for me <clears throat> but uh 
yes, getting back to the game, uh, the graphics, the story was great. Uh, I can't, you know, I, I don't even know how they come up with this stuff, but it, it just worked out perfectly. And uh, here we're getting into a great, great cutscene where all kinds of mayhem takes place uh, as we're entering the uh, planet's atmosphere for the first time and crash landing on the planet. And I'm trying to avoid mines and debris and all kinds of stuff. And this is not like a one of those cutscenes that, you know, happens only once or two times or three times in the game. These kind of cutscenes happen all throughout the game. And they're fantastic because you're always in control of something. Uh, for the most part. Unless it's, you know, something that they're, you know, purposely using the camera to explain something to you. Which doesn't happen often, but... Uh, everything that you see is taking place, uh, the movement of the craft and me shooting it, and then shortly I'll have to get up out of my seat to fix something, and all of that is uh, all me. And that was also a piss poor attempt at me taking out mines. Ten seconds to entry. Now see, my control has left as the camera pans back and you can see all of this that's going on. And it comes back and then I'm back in control just like that. And I gotta put it back on course and take out all this debris. You kind of get the idea. So, anyway, getting back to the uh, the actual game here as we're plummeting down towards the planet. Uh, the the uh, as far as everything that makes a video game. I mean, this thing was polished beyond belief, and all kinds of hell breaks loose here. But this thing was polished beyond belief absolutely almost completely flawless uh, the only time uh, I have experienced any kind of glitches uh, every once in a while I'll get like a garbled audio signal I don't know if that's an Xbox 360 thing only but uh, like it'll be like somebody will be talking to me and it'll come out like and it doesn't even sound right can't understand what they're saying uh, I've only had that happen maybe once or twice um, and it doesn't last for very long. It's only for the duration of whatever they were saying, and then it usually fixes itself. But um, another flaw I've noticed, sometimes when you're stomping a crate, the crate, like the top of the crate will be like lodged in your leg somehow, but it eventually falls out. And that, that seems to be a problem that all the dead spaces have had. I remember that happening in the second one and the third one, and it's just something so minor that it doesn't even matter and now here I ran back and I'm using the kinesis module to fix all that now that the engines are back online uh, that's as that's as much as I could think of as far as glitches go um, very happy now that there is also an auto save feature as you don't have to go to save kiosks all the time and uh, it just keeps getting worse and worse on this nifty little shuttle ride that we're on. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's really not that many negatives that I could really put out there for this game. Uh, maybe the last and, and but not least negative thing I could say is that I didn't really find this one as scary as the... Well, definitely not the first one. The first one had me, you know, like having panic attacks. Like, I literally would have to take breaks during the gameplay of the very first one. And uh, the second one was a little bit less scary. And this one even seems less scary. But the story and the setting and everything just really makes up for it in my mind. Uh, I think this is just about as polished and as good as a game can get. Um, these cutscenes, and this is just fantastic, where the whole ship just cuts away with him still in the cockpit. But uh, the, the the whole the whole experience in in total really just doesn't get that much better. Uh, some of these cutscenes remind me of uh, the Uncharted games. If you, uh, I know we have a lot of Xbox only viewers, but uh, that's a PS3 exclusive title. And uh, is one of my all-time favorite games as well. Uh, but it, a lot of the cutscenes reminded me of some of the stuff that they did in Uncharted. But uh, it, it even seems like they took it to a further level in here. 
But again, I mean, even if you're listening behind my commentary, the sound effects and, and the subtle music in the background and just every little movement that he's making, plus, you know, any any type of little thing in the background has a sound to it as it should. You know, there's like a little alarm in the background going off and you can hear a little bit of metal creaking, little subtle music cues, the suit helmet being broken. Um, one of the best sounding games I have ever played uh, as far as sound design and music and everything goes. And uh, I truly, truly appreciate that. So it's coming time to give this game a rating. And for the very first time ever on Two Guys Reviews, I am giving this 10 out of 10. I don't think you could get any better than this uh, until maybe next the next console generations. So, till next time, Lost Sandman R35 saying, peace out. Bye, bye.